couple of thoughts that, that, that came to mind as we were talking. Um, uh, the first one is we talked about privacy and patient information privacy. It's interesting, very often the way that those things are framed uh, really come from your any point of view. And it's interesting, studies are increasingly showing that when you ask patients how important is patient privacy to you, the answer is exceedingly important. And if you ask patients how willing would you be if you were given, you know, if you were fully informed and had the power to get consent for your data to use, for example, for research purposes, and the numbers are consistently in the 80 percentile. And so what that tells us is that uh, people do want it. People want control of their data, but they, they absolutely, I think, at a deep level understand that the more data we have, the more likely it is that we are to find correlations and that sort of, you know, inform new disease cures and that sort of thing. So the privacy issue is one that can also be looked at very positively. What it means is we need an infrastructure and the tool sets to enable that. So now we're going to go to the next part of the um, uh, the next part of the agenda, and so this is another showcase. I'd like to introduce Dan Wilson to the stage. Um, he's going to enlighten us on the power of health data in the marketplace. Dan uh, is with Moxie Health, and he's going to talk about his company's efforts. Um, he's also the organizer of the Medicine Health Tech, and he believes a community effort is, is on the way to fix healthcare. Dan, thank you very much. Uh, it is not. Hello. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be with you all today. I always leave these events feeling really reinvigorated, and uh, so an opportunity to geek out with you guys is always appreciated. Um, so, what I'd like to do is, is kind of take a couple of minutes to talk about two themes which I think we've touched on quite a bit already today and are, are really major components of everything that uh, the Health Data Consortium is about. And that's about kind of opening up data, so the liquidity. And then another theme um, is making sure that that data has the appropriate context. And so those are, are two things that, that we're working on very closely uh, with Moxie. At, at a different level than, uh, than the federal initiative, certainly. So uh, a little bit about myself. I kind of I grew up in the Detroit area, moved out to uh, Madison, Wisconsin, after school to work at a medical record vendor uh, called Epic. And so while I was working with them, I had a phenomenal opportunity to work with a number of healthcare organizations around the country, uh, including a couple actually here in Chicago. So I was um, able to work with Access Community Health which is a safety net organization here in town. And I, their headquarters, the windows were open, and you can actually see it from here. Uh, and then also Resurrection, which is now part of the, um, the rebranded Presence Health, I believe is the name of it now. Um, and so working with those organizations really influenced my own thinking and exposed me to a lot of the, the shortcomings of the existing EHRs. And uh, really the opportunity then for those who are looking to build new innovative solutions on, on top of the data that is now available from those, those medical record systems. And so uh, just kind of a, as a grounding, uh, are, do we have anyone in the room who's been involved in any of the HIE initiatives here in the state or in, in other areas? Okay, so there's, there's some people, and I imagine uh, so the pain associated with that I'm sure is pretty acute. Um, but it, it, the vision is phenomenal, right? It's this vision of interoperability, of data sharing. Um, and the, the reality is that it's very difficult to realize that, the complexity of the system, and that fundamentally, if you think about the history of, of health technology, uh, it really stems from the needs of the health system and of the lab systems. And it was always about kind of controlling data, uh, not about sharing data, not about making it ubiquitous. And so there's this, this kind of it's very difficult for those same systems to adapt and then participate in an HIE or in this concept of interoperability. And so there's a real opportunity then for, uh, for new entrants I think, to come into the system. And that's what is really, from my standpoint, really phenomenal about what um, healthdata.gov is doing is that it, it starts to lower uh, the barriers to new innovation, to new participants in the system. And if we uh, are all competing on kind of the outcome and efficacy of your product, then we start to really see that the best solutions rise to the top. And that's the, the opportunity that's represented by the work with um, kind of open data. And it's a theme that, that we're really working on 
with Moxie. So what, what we're building uh, is leveraging our expertise from working with the medical record systems to build a uh, kind of vendor neutral EHR and extraction layer over the EHR where we can then interact with the underlying system uh, primarily using web services and then we produce out a consistent RESTful inspired API for people who are building solutions. And so we can really democratize our knowledge of medical record uh, integration and uh, speed up then the, the time to innovation for, for those people who are building uh, kind of new solutions. Um, so next, uh, I think we, we heard about it on the last panel, but it's great to open up data, but without context, uh, it's very difficult to interpret that information that's now coming back. And so I'm an example from Chicagoland. Uh, 500 as a number doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Um, well, you we can't really see here, but 500 murders. This was the recent uh, number that came out from the FBI on the, the murders in Chicago. I apologize, these slides are converted from Keynote and didn't seem to, to compile nicely. But um, so the, the title that, that kind of hit a couple months ago was Chicago's the murder capital of America. And it really doesn't tell the story at all. Because when you, you look at kind of the murder trend over time, you realize we're actually uh, improving, still far too high, but the, the trend is the right trend. And so I, the, this, I guess the takeaway is that it's great to open up data. It's great to send, to have a device that's creating data and sending it back to the health system. But if you don't put it into context, it has, uh, it's very difficult to make any use of it. And so the way that we're um, addressing that is we have a we created a dashboard that sits within the EHR, handles um, user authentication and, and the patient context, so that external applications that are then built on top of our, uh, our integration layer have an opportunity to sit and have a presence directly within the EHR and put information then into context in front of the users trying to make, uh, make use of it. So it, this is our, uh, our initial approach of trying to really use the data that, that innovative companies are, are creating to influence clinical care by putting it in front of the people who need to make use of it. And so uh, just kind of wrapping up, I think there's, there's a phenomenal opportunity for, for all of us at various levels to own kind of our areas of expertise and help the tide rise uh, together. And so for the state level, uh, you know, that, that is a lot of the managing kind of the trusted, secure, um, uh, I guess, serving as a, as a gateway then to the information that's being released. But I think another area where I'd like to see the state stepping up over the, the coming months and years is in this area of, of data ownership. We heard about it during the last panel, but uh, there's a lot that needs to be figured out around uh, the patient owns the data, so so how do we then make the laws measure up with that reality? Uh, at a local level, I think there's there's certainly valuable information that municipalities can be releasing, but beyond that, it's also serving as a test bed in your community for various federal, state, and maybe ACO initiatives, and becoming very active to to support this trend towards more of a community health. And then from a private perspective. There are a lot of entrepreneurs in the room, a lot of private industry is represented, and uh, we really just want to make a difference. We're here to help, and we need uh, as much kind of feedback on what we're working on, and uh, and so I guess use us where we're resources that, that want to be utilized. Thank you. So I really want to impress upon everyone sort of this like what this really means is the power of health data. And we, we, you heard a few things on stage here uh, in the last hour. You heard quantified self, you heard big data. What I think is really interesting is in a lot of ways, you can't have one without the other. We're in a bit of a new, um, um, a bit of a new frontier now. What does it mean to have an N of 300 million where every one of those has a Fitbit in their pocket? Where I can create a new sort of contract between the individual and their physician to say, get healthy, and I'm going to watch you, right? What does it actually mean for disease research to be able to now take behavioral data sets and others and actually triangulate those with large populations in ways that are safe and protect 
the patient's identity, but what can we discover? What disease cures can we accelerate? So I want you all to be thinking about the world of the possible here. There is almost nothing we can't do with the right data. And so this is about policy, it's about privacy, it's about regulation, it's about health records, it's about all of that, but it's also about the world of the possible, which is why we get so excited about this. We're gonna, we're gonna go to a break now, so um, Sarah, you're the timekeeper shifting things around. When do we want people back? Uh, 